What is Skid Row? It's a 50 square block where human beings have been dumped for lack of a better solution. They have centralized services for people who are without a home. It's like something out of Mad Max or some alternate world. To think about humans being thrown away in such a way, yeah, it breaks my heart. And when you come down here, there's just no way to prepare yourself for what you're going to see. There is no us and them. They're you. They're you, divided by circumstance. And there's so much loneliness here. And, uh, and yet... When a sad song comes on the radio, you could change the station. Love you, Mom. Should we be doing this? Should we be, you know, having fun? But even if you're going through a difficult time, there can be joy. That's really what ends up essentially pulling you out of that dark time. Georgia Berkovich, The Midnight Mission, Skid Row, downtown Los Angeles. Hi everyone, my name is Georgia. Take a seat, we have a special guest with us today for our Music of the Mission program. Thank you Georgia, I appreciate it. I'm gonna play you a bunch of songs. Nobody has this stuff. You're not gonna be able to Shazam. I actually started this program um, selfishly because I love music. So I asked my boss at the time if I could start bringing in musicians to play for our community. And he was like, well, we really don't have the resources to do that, but if you have to do it, then go ahead, just keep it really low key. But you can't keep music low key. It's been incredible. Yeah, you should teach exercise classes. <laughs> I was always looking for love in what I was receiving. When I'm seeking to do something for my benefit, it doesn't always turn out very well. But when I seek to do something for someone else's benefit, to be of service, then I get paid back double. And I don't know how that works. You guys know this song? Yeah. Right? It's the same drummer, guitar player, and bass player as this song. You guys know that? You guys know this one too? These moments of sweetness strung together start to create hope. Right? So, that's Toto. And if somebody feels hope, they're going to be more likely to ask for help. Musicians who come in have said that this is the best audience that they've ever had. Uh, I've been a professional musician since I was 15. Ben's composing music for this huge event we have coming up. Ben. Hard rockin' Ben. Tattoos. Rock and roll dude is composing classical music. I was a heroin addict and an alcoholic. We got in the signed band and got to meet my heroes, got to make records with the people that I love. We got to tour with the biggest bands in the world, songs on the charts, MTV, rock magazine, all that crap, and it did nothing. I was a fraud. I was playing music that I wasn't into fully. Yeah, I just want to write honestly. class singers taking the time out to perform my piece. So I'm going to go home and put my notes up and work till about one o'clock in the morning. Orchestration gets better, the technique gets better. I have a lot of stuff going on up here musically. How do I get it onto this? I don't know. people can change. And I see it all the time. And there are some people who will always need help. Everybody who's living here at the Midnight Mission has to have a job here. 
will go side by side with someone as hard as they're working, we'll work with them, but they have to work. My childhood was pretty ideal. I came into kindergarten handwriting because my dad wanted me to be ahead of everyone. And my mom thought that this was a chance for her to have the family that she always wanted. But then my dad died of cancer when I was six years old and everything changed. I think she felt it was a burden to be stuck with me. I try to mask the feelings of the past. I'm just fooling myself, babe. You gotta dig down deep to the way you think. That way you won't play yourself until you extinct. 11, I was arrested for drinking in public, and then by the time I was 12, I was basically a daily drinker. I smoked Marlboro Red Box. I drank Old English 800 was one of my favorites. I liked 7 and 7. I drank 10 high whiskey. I liked beer bonging, you know, with a funnel. I could beer bong five beers at once. I remember being so proud of that. By the time I was 13, I was pregnant, and I terminated that pregnancy at the urging of my mom and my boyfriend. And um, I didn't want to, and I drank and used over that for a long time. And you know, today I'm 49 years old and I've never had children, and so there's still sadness there. I went through all different phases with drugs in the 80s. There was speed, there was crystal meth, there were all these things that people were doing. Perfect breeding ground for the next step, which was I got a boyfriend who had a problem with crack cocaine. And I started doing that with him, and within six months I lost everything. I got evicted from where I lived. I got fired from my job, which, you know, was humiliating, of course. And, um, and then he sold my car for a piece of crack cocaine, which sold for about $20. Ever since I was a kid, I've had uh, night fear. I don't know what it's about. People said it's going to get better when you get older, really. A familiar story of loneliness a scared little child, needing to see, to feel safe. Meeting the darkness was hard for my soul to bear. I had this desire to be closer to my mom, to be loved, really. That's the underlying feeling. And so when I would wake up and I'd be scared at night, I'd go sleep next to her. I'd sleep on the floor next to her bed. I didn't want her to know. Love embraced me while still in the dark. Waiting just outside like a nurturing mother, my chest releases. I breathe in and exhale light. And then get up before she got up in the morning, just so I could be close to her. We need darkness to see the stars. I just listened to music nonstop. It was the first time that somebody put into words how I felt. Chess. Chris is a drummer. He said we should do a whole album. I love the Rolling Stones. I think this album speaks to our community more than uplifting and motivational songs. This is more just, God, like, wake up, everyone. You know, this is happening. This is happening to us. Wake up. We have all different facets of the community represented here. We have staff from the Midnight Mission, we have alumni from the Midnight Mission, we have current clients. And we have the Urban Voices Project, which is a skid row choir, so folks who live in the community who sing together. The storm has threatened my very life today. If I don't get some shelter, I'm going to fade away. If you think about this community and the amount of people that 
are displaced in any other situation. If this were a natural disaster and 58,000 people were homeless. Talk about a midnight gambler. He's still the time to cock a crow. When I was a kid, I had a little Talk organ with the numbers on it so I could play it by numbers. I took violin, I was in chorus, my dad loved music. When I was 16, I took a guitar class and I couldn't stay consistent and I didn't stay consistent really with anything. People say, follow your passion, follow your desire. Well, my passion and desire has been music and I suck at it, so that seems cruel. Why would God give me this desire and this passion not to give me the chops to back it up? I do vocal exercises every day, you know, I sing to myself. Well, it's going to be my primal scream. It will not be Mary Clayton's. I'm feeling exhilarated with a side order of nauseated. <laughs> it is going to be delivered with love and passion, and we're doing the best we can, and we're not professionals. So, well, actually a couple of the people who are gonna sit in on a couple songs are professionals. Uh, it's gonna be okay. <laughs> screams, rape, murder, it's just a shot away, it's just a shot away. So I never had any structure growing up. I've never been grounded. I've never had any rules. I just always ran wild. And so I get sober and I keep hearing about structure. I'm thinking, structure? You know, that, that's like old people. I'm a creative person. I want to want to live. I don't want to be confined and boring. What could be worse? But then I started to find the more structure I had in my life, the more creative I felt. I'm not confined. In fact, it's the opposite. It's opened every door for me. How I feel doesn't matter as much as what I do. Yeah, I got sober 24, and I'm sober 24 years. The greatest gift, really, that I've gotten from my recovery is finding humor in everything, really everything. Enjoying this day, this moment. It will never be here again. Thank you. <laughs> That's incredible.